Episode 173 of Australia's number one marketing show. It's time for some funny business with AG. So join us inside the monkey cage as we talk pop-up shops, the state of social media, and discuss a very special club that you really, really don't want to be a part of. Welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show, where successful small business owners share their secrets to take your marketing to the next level. Now, here's your host, Tim Reid. G'day, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of the Small Business Big Marketing Show. I am Timbo Reid. However, however, so much more importantly, you are a motivated small business owner ready to crank out some great marketing. And that is what we do around here. That is how we roll. We are brought to you by the very good folk at Net Registry. As you may well know, if you've ever listened to this show, you'll be pretty clear that Net Registry give us a lot of online loving. And uh, we're talking SEO love, pay-per-click love, website design love, domain name hosting, domain name registration, just just love. They are there to get your online marketing sorted. So head over to netregistry.com.au. Even better, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com, click on the Net Registry banner, and there are three exclusive packages for you, the motivated small business owner. And a very big welcome to Flying Soloists. Anyone out there in the Flying Solo community, we welcome you aboard. All right, team, well... It's one of those shows. I don't know whether to apologise or to warn you to be very, very excited because it is episode nine of Funny Business. It may well be episode 170-something of the Small Business Big Marketing Show, but every now and then, me funny old buddy, Andrew Griffiths, AG, Griffo, whatever you want to call him, whatever term of endearment you have for him, we get together, we hang out in the monkey's cage and we talk about the lighter side, not always the lighter side, sometimes the heavier side of business, but we always promise to make it fun. I'm just going to head over to the cage now. You can hear those monkeys chattering in the background and one of them is the great man himself. There he is. Hanging off the tree. <laughs> Listen to me, mate. Griffo, uh, welcome, mate. Mate, what is going on this morning? You've had too many bananas. You're bloody, you're fine. I, I, we chatted before and you're gulping down lattes left, right, and so that caffeine is kicked in big time. Mate, I, I can tell you exactly what it is. And I just had, uh, this is going to give an insight into me, the tough podcaster. I just had a spider in my office. <laughs> I know. I'm high on spray. <laughs> Sprayed it, shut the doors. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting little lesson. You know, as I say that, you know, a fair income podcaster would have just grabbed it, bitten its head off and kept going mid. It wouldn't oh. have even paused. you got to toughen up, fella. I'm sure there's listeners out there who are going, oh, you didn't spray it, didn't you? You put it in a jar and put it back outside. No, I sprayed that puppy. It was bigger than a puppy too, Griffo. It had it had sixteen legs. <laughs> I know, I know, which is not normal, but mate, it was big. But that said, I feel a bit weak uh, because <laughs> you're up in Cairns, and I reckon the spiders up there you could whack a saddle on and ride to work. Yeah, well, and I am one of those people that puts the 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 you know the the glass jar. But of course, in Cairns, everything's bigger up here. We put the forty four gallon drum over the spider. <laughs> You know, and, and and walk it out, four blokes holding it down, you know. I mean, it, it, yeah, buddy, you got to harden up down there. I know. Hey, uh, now, well, mate, welcome. It's lovely to have you back in the Thank cage. You. Um, Gee, we've got some stuff to cover. We are going to talk. Uh, we're just going to spend a little bit of time on social media today because um, nice. there's an example of someone I'm following who I'm, I'm watching, using Facebook particularly well, but just a quick overview on where we're at with our social media presence. Mm. We're going to talk about... Um, a wonderful new pop-up store concept um, that uh, that I've seen uh, along the way. We are going to talk about being chased as a consumer, whether we like that or not. We have got a bit of um, – we're going to go old school, talk about whether there is room for old school marketing mm. anymore. And um, you are going to uh, remind us of a very special club that we may or may not want to be a part of. <laughs> plus, plus – there is a new sponsor in the house. Oh, yeah. We like that. 
We like that. Oh, yeah. So uh, uh, proud to uh, announce that we have a, a new partner uh, brand on the SBBM show. And I never call it the SBBM show. I don't like acronyms, the Small Business Big Marketing Show. So, mate, we've got, I don't know, what do you reckon? It'll be five. five Five hour episode, at least at least five hours. I think that's it. Everyone, just cancel all your other appointments. Listen in now; it's going to be worth it. Let's get going. Right, oh mate. Social media. Let's go. Mm. Let's talk social media. So um, I don't know. We just haven't had the chat for a long time. I don't like focusing. There's too much marketing discussion around social media. Mm. Too many gurus out there, and I don't want to put certainly myself out there as a social media guru. But suffice to say that, mate, it's not going away. It ain't going away, but I, I think. It's interesting. I think the way it's evolving, trying to figure out what do you want to use it for. I mean, I, I'm active on, uh, for me, most of my stuff revolves around my blog. I, I'm still a believer that I want to put most of my information on my blog and then use social media to get that out there, you know, to drive it out from there. So that's the central point. But I think for me, at least, what I'm getting a little bit clearer about is how I use LinkedIn, how I use Twitter, and how I use Facebook. Before, it was all a bit of a bloody mesh of a whole yep. pile of things. And I, I don't think I really had a strategy for each one, whereas now I, I tend to look at a bit as LinkedIn is my professional kind of space. I have a couple of thousand connections in there. Um, I use it for articles, depth. A bit of depth is probably what I would say with LinkedIn, more serious stuff. Yeah, yeah. You can afford to go deep with LinkedIn because it is more of a, I see your LinkedIn as a bit of a networking event where people are looking for useful information to grow their business and not just have a chin wag. Exactly. And I find that the conversations around what you post in LinkedIn are intelligent conversations, good for generally. Do you struggle with that? Yeah, well, I don't do any intelligent conversations, <laughs> but other people do. Yeah, right. You know? um, but I like that. You know, people add comments that are well thought through, and I'm a member of a few groups, uh, which I find really interesting. Yeah, good discussion and intelligent stuff. I posted a discussion on LinkedIn about what have you learned from uh, in, in being in business, or what advice would you give to someone who is starting a new business tomorrow? Mm. And I had hundreds of uh, of comments, feedback, mm. really great information. Uh, again, all very diverse. But I thought, wow, good little learning space. Whereas if you if you had have kind of taken that onto Facebook, that conversation, a you would have needed to frame it probably differently, maybe in exactly. a more a lighter tone. Yes. And and not probably got as many kind of um, considered responses. Would that be fair? Absolutely, and, and I think that's the point. When when for me at least, when I'm using LinkedIn, I'm probably in professional mode. My head's in in working mode a bit more. When I'm in Facebook, um, it's a little bit lighter, and in Twitter, it's probably a lot lighter. Twitter. Twitter. I must I must check out Twitter. What's the how do you spell that? Twitter's a new one. It's uh, it's 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 an AG one. It's, it's okay. just me in a tin can. Yeah, and uh, and I need another someone else with a tin can. Correct. Um, but you know, it's interesting. But again, for me, mate, coming back to the blog, everything I do, I do on my blog, and then I choose where I feed it out. Great. I want to um, share then a, a a business that I've been watching their use of Facebook and their blog, and it is. It's brilliant. Um, their articles do my head in a bit. Um, it's a past guest. Mia Friedman is a past oh, yeah. guest of this show, and Mia has a business called Mamma Mia, mm. and it's it's a it's a massively successful blog. And off the back on that blog, her and her team of thirty or forty or fifty people are every day scouring the web for interesting news articles often i'm finding more and more bit of a bit of a rant here but more and more they're kind of negative things that they oh, really? want to kind of share but yeah i've kind of left a couple of comments on their on their blog on their facebook to that effect but but what they do brilliantly is this is this griffo they curate content and they blog about it right so what i mean by that is they might find an article on um another website and they put their own spin on it and that creates a blog post for them, right? They then grab the link to that blog post off their website, off the Mamma Mia website, and then they go onto Facebook and they post it with some unbelievable this is where the this is the ninja tactic. Compelling headlines that make you you, you can't help but click on the link to mm. find out what it's really about. And once you've clicked on that link, you've left Facebook and you're back on their blog. Let me give you an example of three headlines, which you mm. kind of just go, I've got to click on them. Here's the first one. Why this picture of a pregnant celebrity made our office explode. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you've got to click on the link to see the picture. Who was it? 
Don't know. Didn't click on it. Uh, <laughs> I, I could. I've actually got it here, but I've just grabbed these from this morning because I just wanted like everything. Every I just thought I'll go to their Facebook and I bet the first three things will be I want to click on. Next one is the toys from your childhood have, ha- have had a sexy makeover and it's not okay. You uh, click on the link. The third one, someone took a photo of the bathroom at the Sochi, Sochi Olympic venue. You won't believe what's inside. Yeah, I've hey, seen that one. Have you seen that one, funnily enough? Well, no, I, you digress. What is it? T- two men's toilets beside each other. Oh, I have. Like, with, with no wall separating them, yeah. so you have communal sit-down toilets. We should uh, maybe buy them after the, uh, <laughs> the it's over and we could podcast, you know, from, from the can, so to speak. That would be literally by each episode would be right, it's in the can. It's in the can. Oh, hey? oh. Uh, but I must say, though, that that's a very interesting point, not only the use of the social media side of things, but the power of headlines. Oh, mate, the headline. It, it is. I know, and a lot of people know, I write for Inc.com in the USA, and the amount of time and energy that goes into getting the headlines right, it can be the difference between 100 or say 50,000 people reading an article and a million people reading an article is the headline. It is the um, same article and it's extraordinary. So it, the best advice, whether it be on LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever it is, if, if, if you want some great advice, write a, a great headline. Mate, I couldn't agree more. And and that that's just, that goes for right across marketing Everything. communications. Email, you want to get an email opened? Write a great headline. You want to get a brochure read? Write a great headline. Want to, you know, every YouTube videos, blog, every every show note uh, that I write for small business, big marketing, like get that headline right because, you know, that's what's going to be seen in iTunes and that's when people are going to make that decision. Oh, yeah, I'm going to listen to that uh, episode because the, it's compelling headlines. So it's a new attention grabbing device, isn't it? It's not that new, mate. Well, you're right. You're right. It's not that new. Good point. But I'm still surprised at how much correspondence, communication, marketing you get that is really not, you know, so geared away from that. It's so dull. It's so boring. It's so non-attention grabbing that you go, well, you don't want to sensationalize everything. But if you don't get attention, if people don't read what you're doing, there's no point writing it, you know, or sending it. Can I pull you up on something? Sure. I think when you send your wonderful newsletter out, which is full of great content, mm. could be wrong here. Is the headline in the email business bullet number it, it is absolutely. absolutely. Is that is that a good idea? No, it's not. Oh, I pulled you up. Sorry, it's not. But but you're right, and it's interesting that you say that though, Timbo, because it is one of the things that has been. You were chatting off air earlier on about things we need to do and fix up, and for me that was one of the ones exactly that. I initially started it. I'm up to 150, 200, whatever it is, and you keep the routine going of that headline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what 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 change when you get the time are you going to make? I, I will make it. The, the lead story is what I will make it around, you know, rather than that. And in the past, I've tried to make an all-encompassing sentence about all the things that are covered in the newsletter. And again, I think it's just too much. Uh, yeah. But it's, I'm glad to be picked up on it. And I absolutely, you know, believe that you're right. Well, you've been a very naughty monkey. Uh, I think you're a monkey that needs a good spanking, Griffo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tim Bo. Sorry, sorry, let's move on. Uh, great, great to have that chat about social media. A uh, couple of lessons there for us all to, uh, it's all about getting people back to the website. So make yes. sure your social media is conversational, engaging, and a little bit curious. Oh, hey, sorry, uh, yeah, enough. No, no, okay. mate. It's uh, The five-hour thing at the start, that was a joke. <laughs> we can't do a five-hour episode. Right. I am going to move on. Now, Griffo, I have come across... It's actually not a brand new idea, but it's an idea that I want to see more of. And I saw this a fair bit in Italy, this concept of pop-up stores. And I came across a, an idea here on the wonderful website, Springwise, talking about how there's a, a, a business called Storefront, which is collaborating with the New York Metropolitan Transit Authority to open up unused subway facilities mm. as pop-up booths for- I've read the same article. Isn't I've it worked. great? So basically the concept is for micro businesses who could never dream of having retail space on the street or in a subway uh, are now having the opportunity to use underutilised space. And I think, you know, you only have to walk around high streets these days. There's a lot of police signs and um, disclosure, for disclosure signs 
every, not everywhere, every now and then. And the idea of actually giving entrepreneurs and, and micropreneurs the, the chance to have some retail space, I think, is golden. Yeah, absolutely. And interesting to see, I've even had pop ups in cans. You know, oh, I mean, God. I was things. That, people- that, that, that backwater. What, what is going on around that side of things? But I must say, I, I agree with you. I love the idea. It, it's, it's, it's such a, it's the essence of entrepreneurialism, yeah. uh, that, that find a space, do something different about it. Did you see one, I don't know if it was on Springwise, but I came across it somewhere um, where actually this is a little bit different, but what, what a local town had done, they had a lot of empty stores, they actually um, got facades put on the shops that looked like the shops were full. So, uh, so the, 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 imi- the paintings or whatever it was, photos on the front of the shop were like a butcher shop. So it looks like a real butcher shop and you'd kind of be walking along going that and it, they just created this almost kind of arty community of empty shops. But I just thought, wow, isn't that a nice yes. thing to try and promote, I guess, the area more than anything else. But isn't Springwise one of the greatest resources on the face of the planet? For inspiration. A good inspiration, good way to, you know, I even use it. In fact, it's funny how we, it's an interesting question to ask, how do people use your product or service? Because for me, Springwise is a quick break when the brain's overloaded. If I've been working on something, I think, you know, I can get up, go for a walk, grab a glass of water. But also flicking to something like Springwise is fun because you kind of, it just shows you new ideas and it just kind of, I don't know, kind of uses a different part of your brain. So um, I use a lot of, a lot of Springwise um, ideas and things in my presentations to, to when I'm coaching clients yes. or doing stuff like that. Hey, this is what I'm talking about. Have a look at this idea. Yeah. Uh, came. I think we spoke about it on our last um, session was about the mobile dentist. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and, and again, the concept that this is an illustration of the fact that if you're not mobile, there's yeah, that's what people are doing now. They're chasing the business. Taking it to the streets. Taking it to the teeth. Hey, um, just a shout out then to finish that discussion around pop-up stores. Landlords out there, local councils, local authorities, wake up. Use that space that isn't being utilised and help young or old entrepreneurs and micropreneurs, eh? Here, here, mate. Here, here. Love it. Now, Griffo, speaking of new ideas, my friend, I mm. love a new idea and I particularly love a simple idea that addresses a common problem, right? Okay. Beautiful. I would like to welcome to the small business big marketing tribe, swiftly.com. That would be S-W-I-F-T-L-Y dot com. Nice. Uh, they are, it's an amazing little service. Small design fixes fast. For 15 bucks a fix. Wow, that's eh? cool. It is. So what you can do, here's some things you could use Swiftly for. You could get your, your business card altered. You know, if you changed address, you could just send Swiftly your business card. They'll put the new address on it. You could get a photo touched up. Wow, that's handy. <laughs> You've got a few of those, Griffo, that you could just <laughs> get a little fix to, a hey? little lift. Plenty, mate, plenty. And- you could get a logo um, altered. You might want to change the colour of your logo. Um, you could get an image vectorized. That's a bit techo, isn't it? That's about as mm-hmm. geeky as we get on the show. But um, that's what Swiftly do. All you have to do, you go to swiftly.com, you hit create a task, and you literally, it says what, it asks for your email address. It asks you to describe what you want done and then to upload any logos or images or sketches or documents that the task needs uh, to work on. So do you have to send them like graphic designery files, like an in Illustrator or Adobe InDesign or that kind of stuff? Do you know what? This is <laughs> that was exactly my first question when they when they approached me to 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 be part of the show. Uh you don't. So if you've got like a JPEG oh. or a PDF or a PNG file, they send it and they can convert it to a vector file that they can work on. I, that's extraordinary. Now, how quick, and I bet they do it fast, right? So, obviously, they would have to. Uh, therein lies the name, Griffo, yes. swiftly. Sw- okay. <laughs> <laughs> right there, right there. Uh, see, I, you know, I, I told you I'm not that bright. But 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 how fast is fast? Is it like we all have, is it going to come back to you in three days fast? You know what? It's minutes. It's not even hours. Really? Yeah, yeah, really? yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, no, we're talking, you, you, know, you know, it could be as it could be as quick as like 25, 30 minutes. Uh, or it might be, you know, a few hours, but nothing more. It's just quick, quick turnaround. Um, so, guys, this addresses a real problem, particularly, you know, if, if you don't want to, if you've just got minor design changes that you don't want to bother your graphic designer with or you know it's going to cost a bomb if you do. Or take forever. Well, yes, yep, yep. You know. Hello to all you graphic designers. But, by the way, there are uses that graphic designers can use for Swiftly for. I'll touch on that in future episodes. Great. 
great service, isn't it? These micro services. This, yes. This, uh, that's what we're starting to see more of. I mean, I was recently, you know, trying to come up with a banner. And, uh, and, and, you know, you can get banners done. You can do, you know, with so many different things that that's all they do is make banners. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, it's quick changes like that. Like for me, I know my graphic designer would find making changes, a lot of these little changes actually a pain. Open the file, do all this, get it, email through, rah, rah. It's, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a very cool idea. I love it. So listeners, head over to swiftly, com and try it out. 15 bucks a task, hey? The everyone's a winner. Now, Griffo. Yes. Let's move on to the chase. Let's cut to the chase. Okay. I like being chased. <laughs> Do you? Well, I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> as a consumer, I'd like to see you being chased. <laughs> Be like that, something out of the Benny Hill show, if you can remember that, uh, that okay. far back. The fastest milkman in the West, mate. <laughs> now, mate, as a consumer, I've been reflecting on this because there's a couple of uh, instances in the last week or two where I, I, I've actually wanted to be chased but haven't been and it's left me feeling like, oh, well, do they really want my business? Is there something wrong with the product or service that's going on? I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, we just came back from a big trip to, in, to Italy, four weeks in Italy, big family holiday. If I had been the travel agent that booked that trip for us, I reckon I would have diarised the fact that the Reed family were back give them a call, see how they went, because here's the thing, we came back going, how good was that holiday? Let's book another one. Let's book one next year. Exactly. Hey? So I haven't heard from that travel agent, and hello if you're listening. Second, um, I, my accountant, who every now and then does listen to this show, um, we've been talking um, about an interesting investment strategy. Filled out all the documents before I went away, and uh, was ready to pounce on it immediately upon my return, and so was he. But I haven't heard from him, and it's it's a it's a it's a very high involvement decision. And I wanted to be chased. I wanted, and now I'm going. Oh, maybe it's not as good as it was, and he's lost faith. I don't know. You know, like mm-hmm. so. My question: Do you like to be chased? I do. I do, and I, and I. I've got to say, same thing. Look, I could mention many, many examples of that side of things around it. I think, uh, I, I think it's one of the the greatest weaknesses in business these days is a lack of proactivity from business owners or business development people, whoever it might be. You know, if you look back at the stats, and there's some old stats around for many years, but you know, a lot of people say that you know, eighty percent of sales are made on the fifth to twelfth contact. You know, yeah, that most wow. people fail to even make the first contact. They fail to, you know, people send through quotes. Define a contact, any like a quote, an email, a face-to-face. A, a, yes, yes, absolutely, yeah, one of those, you know. So if you add them all up, it's a 12th contact. I've also read figures that if you're, say, a contractor, a plumber or a, um, you know, a tradie, that, uh, that if you're the one who rings and follows up on the quote, you increase your chances of getting that job by 50%. You know, so so just by having a process in place. Now, I don't think it changes. I just had this conversation with my web developer yesterday saying, hey, I love what you do, but I would love you to be more proactive and be coming to me with ideas. Like, you're the professional in that space. Tell me what I need to be doing rather than me going, oh, I reckon it's time to change my blog headings or my newsletter <laughs> template or format or whatever it might be. And and, and I agree. I, I talk to so many people that want to improve their business and they go, oh, we need more money. We need more revenue. And I always ask them that, what's your follow-up process like? They don't have a follow-up process. They don't have a strategy. They don't get it. Your travel agent's a prime example. You know, a smart travel agent would have rung you two or three days afterwards. Actually, a really smart travel agent would have sent you a gift Correct. to be waiting for you, you know, when you got back, something you tell you. When you're spending that kind of dough, I, th- I think I think this chase thing, you know, like if, if I'm in, the, I don't want to be chased when I'm in the supermarket buying a chocolate bar. But I think the higher involvement the decision, the more dough you've got, to, it's going to cost whatever that involvement in, involves. Then 
the chase becomes that much more important. And um, like I don't, I personally don't like walking into a clothes shop and you know, how are you? Yeah, good. How's your day? Yeah, whatever. You know, I just want to have a look at these jeans, and then they follow you around. Um, but I don't like that. But but for the higher involvement for me, chase me every day of the week. Well, I agree. I think that's different in a retail environment. That's more a stalking. I'd rather put a restraining <laughs> order on the person. Uh, yeah. and, and, and there's that sense of that service to follow you around. And, yeah. and most of us Australians in particular, we hate to be followed around. Let us work out what we want and then we'll we'll buy it generally. Bali's good at that, mate. Walk into any shop in Bali, you will oh, look one centimetre behind. you got a shadow. You know, shadow. Yeah. <laughs> you've got a shadow. You, you got a, and, but but it, 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 it's such a big point, mate. Uh, so many b- businesses could generate so much more revenue. In fact, I don't know any business business that couldn't generate more revenue by having a better follow-up system, you know, whatever it might be. And and often it's just because it's not inherent in that business or that industry rather. You know, people think, oh, well, you know, we give quotes and then they'll come back to us if we're ready. I had this conversation yesterday with a company that makes kitchens. I have this conversation with people all the time. Have an extraordinary follow-up strategy for con- making contact making sure after the sale, all these, this is kind of old school stuff that the old guys that used to sell. Do. What do you think, why doesn't it happen more? Uh, is it a lack of, well, people get busy? Do they think that they're going to be annoying? Is it going to be an annoying kind of thing? Some of it, I think people are afraid of coming across as being pushy. They don't, no one wants to be a used car salesman, is that concept? And that's, mm-hmm. that's Hello the, to all you used car salesmen listening, by the way. But that's the, that is the misconception, isn't it? That, that I, I'm being pushy. Whereas in fact, it's not at service. It, it's, it's, it's a, as long as you aren't being pushy, of course. But the follow up, how many times does someone really follow up on you in an extraordinary way? I, I had this conversation about booking venues recently, you know, to someone who books hundreds of them around the world on a global side. Out of the last year, they've been followed up once by a venue. How did everything go? Wow. You know, and you look at it and go, gee whiz, all you gotta do, all you gotta do most of the time to get the sale is make the call. And, and here's the thing, what I found, and I'll, I'll share another experience I had just on the weekend, just gone. It's about starting and continuing the conversation. So um Soph and I went to buy a couch on the weekend just gone. And again, high involvement decision. You know, it's it's not hundreds of dollars; it's a thousands of dollars purchase decision. And we got to one place, and this is not so much about the chase, but and they actually haven't followed up, which is kind of interesting. And it's now Friday, and this was Sunday. But I, I loved their sales process. So I'm digressing a bit, but stick with it because I think it's worth sharing. We went in. We were looking around. We were really just looking around. We didn't think we were ready to have the conversation with the salesperson on the floor. But she came up. She said, hi, you know, welcome. Have you got any questions? And we said, no, no. In fact, I said, no, no. We're just just having a bit of a squiz at the moment and just kind of getting a sense of what's around. She said, that's fine. Um, but just be aware of a couple of things. Um, and then she told us about the frame manufacturing process. Mm. And at that point... The conversation had started, and 90 minutes later, the conversation finished. So mm-hmm. she had – now, we didn't buy a couch then, and she actually didn't want it. She even said she, – she didn't say don't buy, but she said go away and consider the two options, and – um it was it was impressive. It's actually interesting that she hasn't followed up. But what was impressive is the way she's taken us from no, we don't want to, we don't want to, and we don't have any questions just yet to saying oh that's fine, but just be aware that our frames are the best in the world or whatever it is. And and the conversation started. But that's where though, to me, the successful people in any form of business and selling and all the rest of it, it is a conversation. And you and I both know, and and people know the way to get that started. The start is the problem. Hi, can I help you? You know, that kind of stuff. Everyone gets stumbled on that is to ask better questions. It all comes back. You've got to not master yeah, the yeah, answers, yeah. master the questions. Because if you if you ask the right questions, it's extraordinary how that just creates a conversation. Yep. Can I share a brief story as well around that example? How brief is it, Griffo? Just what's your what's your define brief? Four or five hours this one. <laughs> but it's about buying a car. Here we go. Exactly the same process. Friend of mine lent him my car, wrote it off. I needed to buy a new one so that I could run him over and kill him. (laughs) Um, But I did the, in Cairns, all the car yards are on the one road. And so I literally, you go down, T-shirt, shorts, thongs. You know, Saturday morning, went to every car yard. The first six, 
I couldn't get anyone to talk to me or even give me a brochure or sell me a car. This was in the depths of the GFC when everyone's complaining about not being able to sell a car. And then the last one, I walked in. The first thing the guy said to me, he said, before we talk about what cars we've got available, come and sit down for a minute. I want to find out what you need your car for. Oh, yeah. An hour yeah. later, he's asked me, how many people do I carry? How far do I drive? What do I yeah. do? Rah, rah. And, he said, and came out and said, this is a car that I think is going to suit your purposes. Twice what my budget was, rang me the next day, hey, you know, we've organised it, we've got another vehicle in test drives, all that kind of stuff. It was so professional. I spent twice the amount on that car Did you? simply because of that, twice my budget because of that. T- tell me, I mean, that's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. What was his post-purchase follow-up like once he'd got the sale? Fabulous. He continued to love you. Absolutely wow. fabulous. One, you know, the couple of days after, a month later, how's your car going? First wow. service. In the three-month thing, there was a little, you know, a, a gift in the car. You know, thanks very much for hope you love the car, which I do and did, you know, rah, rah. It was very, very good until he left the dealership and then the next people, all I do is get a phone call once every year or so saying, can you come and buy a new car? Oh, it's interesting, mate, that whole follow-up thing. Uh, it's actually a question that's been asked inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum at the moment, and um, it's clearly stumping a lot of people because mm, there's no – and, in fact, I've got the antenna out for finding uh, an expert person in business that is uh, that is that uses follow-up as a major strategy. So, anyway, we've covered – there's a few tips there, and um, I think that conversation needs to continue. Listeners, if you, if you have – any tips around follow-up, uh, we'd love to hear them. Go to the show notes. Uh, for sm- Go to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and find this episode of Funny Business and leave some comments in the show notes because I think it's a really important strategy that probably gets underutilized. Hey, Griffo, um, I just want to share, speaking of just really good things, really good marketing, our mates at NetRegistry have got a keyword strategy service that I think I a little bit biased, them being the sponsors of this wonderful show and all, but I do think every small business owner should be very, very aware of the key words that they should be tracking in their business if they want to get found online. You know, yeah, I agree, I, absolutely. And look, I don't think there's anything anything uh, wrong also with really flying the flag for Net Registry and a sponsor of the show oh, when they're offering great products. You know, Mate. that's what it's all about. I've been, you know, again, from my point of view, I've worked with Net Registry over the last few years. I've presented at a few gigs, love their product, etc. I, I think that's a great thing for us to be promoting and uh, and and sharing sharing the words, sharing the love. You know, I, I agree. They have got great packages, great a great business. Um, we, just like we spoke about Swiftly, they offer a great service for our small business listeners and entrepreneurs. You know, we, we need to be getting this information out because I think a lot of time, where do you go for your info? That's one of the things that I think many people struggle with. And you're such a, a wealth of information. Seriously, you know everything about all this kind of stuff. And and and, and that's the what I meet with people. I often go, well, how do you know about all this stuff? I go, I'd ask Tim Reed. You know, that's the, he knows everything about what camera to buy, who to go to to get that, what yeah, yeah, what yeah. software to use for this, what what microphone to buy, who to get your your keyword strategy service yeah. done. And Why do cornflakes go soggy in hot milk? I still don't have the answer for that one, but exactly, you know, those kind of things. So great stuff to share, and I think everyone would agree. Yeah, it is, mate, and and I, you know, bless them for for supporting a show like this and for doing the work they do with small business. But um, that well said. Um, back to the keyword strategy service listeners, um, they will identify the, the short and the long tail keywords, uh, the local keywords for your business, which up to 25 of them. So then you know what keywords you should be including in your website copy, in your blog posts, in your videos, whatever, whatever content you're creating. They'll then give you a keyword placement report, which shows where your website website stands on search engines right now for those keywords. So you've got a benchmark and then they'll do a 20 minute phone consultation on search engine optimization strategies. Griffo, you'd, I'd, you'd pay, what did you, what would you pay for that? Five grand? Well, at least. At least. Yeah. Well, 99 bucks and that's 99 Australian bucks, by the way, overseas listeners. So, um, Love that package. Head over to Net Registry. Well, don't head over to Net Registry because you won't find that specific package. This is a listener package. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and click on the Net Registry banner on the right hand side and you'll be taken to that keyword strategy service. Now, Griffo, I'm loving this. We are covering some serious marketing ground. That, that spider gave us some mojo. That's all I'm going to say. 
I tell you what, mate, I'm just I am having a look behind. <laughs> and um I thought about saying that. Just what's that on the wall crawling up the wall behind you? But <laughs> would not have been funny because I don't know, I don't know what it is, but um the bugger, I sprayed him or uh, her, I don't know, don't know what, what it was, and it disappeared. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then, then I'm thinking, angry. And then I have all this internal conversation like, oh, it's angry, it doesn't like me. When it does see me, it's going to jump on me. I'm convinced spiders jump, by the way. Um, I know, I know, listeners, I'm giving you some insight that maybe I shouldn't be giving, but, mate, that's how we roll here, fairly transparent. I know, I know. It's open and ugly. That's all I can say. I'm loving your pink T-shirt, by the way. Thank you, mate. Feeling very modern and new age at this stage of the game. Hey, we're, we're videoing this. Uh, we don't normally video conversations. I don't normally video conversations when I do uh, interviews because it does get in the way of the audio, but this audio is wonderful. I'm considering maybe... We think it's wonderful. Let's wait and see what the audience is going <laughs> yeah, to well, say. I said the quality of the audio, not the content of the audio. But, um, mate, we could almost post this to YouTube or, you know... It could be a vodcast. Uh, I, I'm happy. I'd be happy if I was wearing trousers, you know. But well, you've you know, got the, it's the old newsreader thing, mate. You, it doesn't matter what you got on down below. The Ron Burgundy of the world hasn't Ron Burgundy been such a wonderful promotion? Just sorry, to, just like how well is that? Every time I turn around, he's doing the news, or he's just like what a great example of marketing creeping out of traditional areas and going into new spaces. Mate, it is, for listeners who don't know what we're talking about, so Anchorman 2, it's out. Ron Burgundy is the, the lead. What's his name? Will Ferrell yeah. uh, is, is the, is, is plays Ron Burgundy. And what the, the marketers, what the, the – yeah, I guess it's the marketers of that, of that movie have done is taken the lead character and put him everywhere throughout the world in real life – News. He anchored a news That's right. um, broadcast out of the states alongside another newsreader and just read the news. Well, and do you remember he did the a news a flash about the Australian elections? Yes, basically, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they did it country specific. These YouTube clips around the world and sporting events has appeared at, at things, and, and as you say, reading the news. Wonderful how the world, you know, where marketing used to be so linear. And now it, it, it's so it, it's it's an inch deep, perhaps, but a mile wide. Oh, has it been segmented? I mean, this is where the big marketers, and this is a small business show, but it's a, it's a marketing play that any any business can do. They've got to roll their sleeves up and forget the. Bi- I know the big media still delivers numbers. Like if you want to reach a lot of people and you've got deep pockets, then go and book a TV schedule or go and book yeah, sure. um, a, a radio campaign, but. Have deep pockets and don't expect massive conversion unless you unless you commit to some frequency. But some of the smart advertisers and, and businesses that I'm seeing are actually identify, like for example, identifying the top 100 podcasters or the top 100 bloggers, and and actually rolling the sleeves up and tapping each of them on the shoulder and saying, "Hey, listen, can we integrate into your brand?" Albeit. The, the, the audience size is going to be way smaller, but across a hundred of the top ones, they're going to get so much engagement because the audience is so committed to that podcast or to that blog. Mm. Yeah, an interesting point, though, on that too. I think another maturity, and we spoke about it. We touched on social media before. I've got a few databases. I've got a database with four or five thousand people in it. Another one with you know different two or three thousand. Another one with five hundred people in it. The one with five hundred, I generate far more business from than the one with you know thousands in it. Why? And, and because they're targeted. They're they're more engage with me they're more active with me they're more it's not just about numbers and i and i see so many people and the same with mainstream media you book a, a add in a newspaper add on tv or whatever it might be big numbers but how many are really your audience if you've mm. got a database of 500 people who are fans absolutely listeners whatever they're, they're a part of your community they're far more likely to buy and i said every time i'm promoting something that database of 500 is where i make my money from and i go isn't that interesting you know that the big and we're all obsessed about numbers, numbers. get a bigger database get a bigger yeah, database yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, go, you know what it's about the quality of the da- database and not the si- size is irrelevant yes in, in, my, in my world obviously the dream is to build a big database 
that is well both quality and quantity but but yeah the obsession about just building 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 i, I think is just a, a farce to yeah. be honest it, it's like um you know some of the some of the viewer things how many people are watching a tv show well you know i, I think those figures are becoming less relevant now that's why social media is becoming stronger again from advertising on facebook advertising on that's uh, extraordinary. And, and look, it's, a, it's another conversation, maybe for another funny business, but just speaking of mass media, speaking specifically of TV, but I don't know whether the programmers really get it because when I do choose to sit down and watch telly, there's not a lot of great content there. And what I love about the, the, the micro nature of media now, and I think, by the way, every small business should consider themselves a publisher, you know, Absolutely. create a podcast, have a blog, create a video series, have a forum, whatever it may be, um, is that all of a sudden, you know, if no matter what topic you're interested in, there'll be a podcast or a blog or a video, something on YouTube to sati- satiate. Is that a mm. word, mate? Satiate? That'll do, yeah. Placate? I don't know. You know, satisfy satisfy yeah. one's needs. Whereas you flick the TV on and, oh, mate, it's C- CIS and NCYS and person of, ah, oh, mate, it's just all it's all mm-hmm. detective shows. The whole world needs to see a detective show, do they? I must, must have missed that email. Don't know, but it's changing times and the same old thing. If you just keep putting ads in or just keep running TV commercials, you know, my advice is to rethink that strategy. Not saying not to, but you really got to be making sure it's working. The the old generic thing, you know, building your image, building your brand, you know, you and I have spoken about that stuff in the advertising world for years and years and years. The world is different. It's much more targeted and specific and that's it's a wonderful thing for small business owners. Griffo, never been a better time to market a small business. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Hey, listen, that takes us. Uh, that takes us onto our. It's, it's one of the great segues, unplanned. I love it. Uh, unplanned, but uh, we are getting better at what we do. I, I reckon we get to show no, funny business ninety nine. This is funny business number nine, by the way. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I know. I um, now, um, you have raised an interesting uh, question here asking, is there still a place for old-fashioned low-tech marketing tools like sandwich boards, newsletters, brochures, thank you notes? Have you gone crazy? And a, an open sign on a door oh, for retail premises, you know, the you... flashing neon sign, open, open, open. I don't know. What do you think? I'd be really I, interested in your opinion. I reckon absolutely there is. People think, mm. you know, and I don't want to be seen necessarily holus bolus as the, you know, the guy, uh, the new world of marketing guy, although I spend a lot of time talking about that. It's not that I think there is no longer a role for the A-frame or the newsletter or the brochure. What I love, and this was proved in episode 163 of this show where I interviewed Carmen from Urban Martial Arts in Brooklyn, the integration of old school and new school marketing techniques. Bring it on. Have a brochure that sends people to a YouTube video clip as a call to action where they can find out more about you or see a video of a product overview that you've got. Um, Carmen was going to um, school open days and having information booths for her martial arts gym where where her entire, so old school marketing, Mm. but her entire objective was to get people, people's mobile numbers into her um, email management system, into her text management system, so that she could then communicate with them post the event. Um, Fabulous. Combine both, mate. What do you reckon? Look, I couldn't agree more. What I see, though, is a bit of a problem in small businesses is that, we are obsessed with social media or we're frustrated with social media or we're spending all of our time working in digital. We're somewhere in there, somewhere in that mix, you know, or resisting it, you know, whatever it might be. There's, everyone's in there because there's such a conversation around it. What, what I find difficult, though, is that people are almost forgetting the old stuff that they used to do. They're forgetting about these kind of simple things that, that really were beneficial because they think that you've got to just throw it all, you've got to forget about that stuff and just do the new stuff. And I had this very interesting conversation with a, a chap recently and uh, and it was interesting. His business used to do a million dollars a year turnover. It had dropped down to half that. And um, and and he asked me, what do I need to do? And I, and I gave him a list of all the things that I thought he needed to do, which was all old school, bringing your clients, putting an open sign out, you know, um, send out a newsletter, you know, 
follow up people, thank them for their business, all that kind of jazz. And he sat there with this kind of dumb grin on his face and I, and I kind of went, I got a bit frustrated with him. I said, do you think this is silly? He said, he said, no, the exact opposite. He said, I used to do all of those things, uh -huh. but I stopped doing them because I've become obsessed with social media and Facebook and, and all this stuff because everyone keeps telling me that's the answer, that's the answer, that's the answer. And, uh, and that was the moment went on when he said, you know what, I've got to be doing all these things again. Two months later, rang him after we'd He'd implement all these things. The update thing, how's it all going? And they said, "I'm my turnover's back up to where it was within a right. really short amount of yeah. time because I'm communicating more directly with my my clients. I'm even hanging out an open sign. People said, oh, we thought you were shut down for a while. <laughs> and uh, it was quite dark in the shop, you know, and, and he's going, what, really? Really? You know, it, it's extraordinary. That's a great way that you just phrase that. It's that really that mixing the old school and the new school. It's not either or. No, it's Both not. Both of them need to be working together and integrated. Absolutely not. There's a, there's a balance. In fact, uh, there's a great forum discussion at the moment from uh, forum member Mark, and who raised it, he raised it at the start of this year, um, all about networking. Now, Mark is very much an online guy. Uh, his business is all about cloud-based uh, computing for the small business owner. But he's, I'll read you part of what he posted in the forum. He says, one of my major goals this year is to do more networking that is active and part of my marketing and business development plan. I definitely want to take the approach of building contacts and connections and not just selling. If I can regularly attend one networking function a week, different events rather than the same meetup each week, by the middle of the year, I think it will. I will be pretty happy. What are your tips and thoughts on this? And there's a wonderful discussion inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum Nice. about your tips on how to do that and you know again like getting out from behind the, in front of the screen mm. and i talk about you know looking up three centimeters you know we're looking at the screen the whole time look up three centimeters and there might be a person there you know and um exactly so exactly. Yeah, i think just that offline online old school new school there's get your balance right Mm, and 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 that's really the hard part for a lot of business owners is I don't quite know what my balance is. I don't. How much time should I spend on social media? How much time should I spend out and about? And and, and I don't really know that there's a definitive answer for that. But I, but I do believe if you spend all your time doing old school, your business is going to be in trouble somewhere down the line. Um, if you spend all your time doing new school, I, I think the exact same. You know, I, I think it's it's got to be a wonderful balance that you've got to figure out how. What does that translate for you? What are the old schools? Just like what we spoke about before, about what you, you know, become a follow-up guru. That's that's my yeah, advice yeah. from yeah. our earlier conversation. Well, that's old school, unfortunately. It kind of really isn't, but it kind of is. So some of it, you can follow up. I mean, it depends whether follow-up means a phone call. You can use new techniques for follow-up, yeah. But, but you know, generally the old school, sitting down and writing a thank you note, I still believe a thank you note to someone is one of the most powerful marketing tools you can ever have, you know, particularly if you have high-value clients. You know, high value customers. Thanks for the business. You know, and, uh, you know those kind of things. You know, again, uh, I, I believe if you can work out the mix and commit time to both of them, that's a really great thing. Positive step for a business. Love it, Griffo. Great conversation. Now, um, now, buddy, <laughs> I like I like this next topic. Beautiful. Made me laugh when I saw it come through. Now, you reckon there's a very special club uh, out there yes. that we don't really want to be a part of. But you reckon uh, they are on a fairly uh, a fairly strong recruitment drive? What's the club, mate? Well, look, and this is a club that's been around for many, many years. You know, it, it exists. You know, it's it's around there, and uh, yes, they're recruiting. It's called the Miserable Bastards Club, right? And what it is, it's 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 those small business owners that uh, that no matter what is going on, they um you know, they find some way to be miserable. Now, to identify club members, they don't wear patches. They don't. You know, they're not like, you know, Queensland now, we have bikey laws. You can't wear patch stuff now. But typically you'll see a three of them at a coffee shop sitting together. The reason you've got to have three, a triangle, is so that if one goes to the toilet, the other two can continue being miserable, okay? Right. You can't have a break in the miserableness. Now, you know those people that you meet and they are negative about it. business sucks, the economy sucks, the political party sucks, everything sucks. It's miserable, miserable, miserable. Now, I see those people, no matter what is going on, they find something to be miserable about. Yep. And and to me, they are so detrimental to your business. Mm. You know, they are so detrimental to your headspace. They bring you down. They Business success to me is so much about what goes on in your head. You know, it is so much about your attitude. Uh 
that that I, I kind of burst in the skin with it because I, I just believe if you have the wrong attitude, you're destined to not succeed in business. But but the, the miserable nature of people, I see them around there and I go, well, isn't it extraordinary how powerful that is? And I used to say, you get five small business owners in a room together and the conversation will turn negative within a matter of 30 seconds. That's the power of, of sometimes you know, the negativity side. Not so much now. I believe that's changed a lot. Yeah, okay. I, ho- I hope so. I mean, that's that's a broad sweeping comment and it clearly it is. Uh, And I, I have seen that, but then it is all about the people that you hang out with. And boy, oh boy, you know, one of the things, one of the things I love about the forum is that it is just full of motivated small business owners. And anytime we get, and you know, KPI is another example that you and I are both involved in where, when you are around people who just want to improve, it's a wonderful, wonderful space and it can't help but rub off. I mean, you know, I say you are who Google says you are. You also are who, who you are, you are who the people, what am I saying here? You are a reflection of the people that you hang around with too. And sometimes right. we've got to make hard decisions and say, listen, um, yeah, well, whether you actively say, I, I can't hang out with you anymore, or you just remove yourself from the negative aspects, the negative influences, and gravitate to the more positive ones. It, it, and it doesn't take long. You only have to be in a room once with a group of positive people, and you can you can feel that um, inside. Well, and, and, and I agree completely. I I think really the, my reason for this message and, and to get and to have this discussion is that I see people who are really positive, yet the the their business group that they hang with or their other people that are around five people they spend most of their time with are not. And, uh, and it makes it really hard. And even for them internally, they don't agree with a miserable conversation, but they join it to be part of the group, mm. you know, and, and that has an impact. Uh, and I've seen this for many, many years. In small business, there used to be the thing I used to call it, you know, small business syndrome or the small business medal of honour where you had to turn around and go, oh, I haven't had a holiday for 25 oh, yeah, yeah, years, yeah. you know, yeah. like and I've got the scars to prove it you know, emotional and physical, and kind of be proud of that fact, wear that as a as a mark of, you know, um, you know, I've been building this business for 25 years and not made any money, you know, like I should be proud of that fact yeah. or, or, you know, all those kind of things. And to me, it's just, it's just wrong. It's just not right. If you've made any money in your business for 25 years, well, that's something to be sad about, not to be proud about. If you hadn't had a holiday in 10 years, well, that's sad. That's, that's you know, that's the whole reverse of what we're all trying to do here. You do need to be very careful who you surround yourself. And if you're not part of an active, positive group where you haven't got one there, the problem is anyone listening to the show, we're probably preaching to the converted already. But I think a lot of people are always looking for inspiration. That's why they come and listen to things like this or come to workshops or or read positive stuff. Um, and, and I see a direct relationship between a people, their st- state of mind and their profitability. You know, positivity equals profit. A past guest of mine, Phil McKinney, who's responsible for creating the killer innovations process, which is, you know, when you're innovating, you've got to be positive. You've got to have an open mind. You've got to lose um, limiting beliefs and all that type of stuff. And he's he's coined there's, – there's a number of blockages to thinking innovatively in your business. Uh, there's about 10, but one of them, he's, he's coined the phrase the corporate antibody. Mm. And this is the person who goes, that'll never work. We've tried that. It's too expensive. They'll laugh at us. You know, it's just this, it's this immediate, and, and I think all of us have got our check out. We, we all do it. I mean, at some point, whether it be just for five minutes in a day or, or, or week, every now and then we are a member of the Miserable Bastards Club. Mm-hmm. We've just got to check ourselves and go, oh, no, 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 no. Before I say no, find a reason to say yes, you know. That doesn't mean every idea has got to be a good one. I mean, Absolutely. there's some pretty crook ideas out there. But I think we've got to check ourselves and make sure that our membership to the Miserable Bastards Club is uh, is cancelled real quick. Yeah, and, and don't feed it. Don't feed you it. Know, don't, 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 you know, if the conversation turns around like that, as you say, yeah, sure, it's easy. We can all have a whinge about this or that or the other, but the reality is we can feed it. We can, you know, there is a melancholy that can exist that, that is easy to get fed, you know, at times. And uh, and we just, a bit of self-management, we've got to know when we join a conversation like that going, well, I actually don't believe that. Why am I actually saying this? Or are the people around me, do a, do a relationship audit. Look mm. at the people that you're spending your time with and go, well, are, who are members of the club? Hopefully no one. But if you've got people in there, I, I am 
quite firm about it. You know, where you, where you, do you remember Ian Elliott's standard conversation that he has? You know, he has a his his life is an asshole free zone. You know, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 again. To me, that, that's what it's about. Yeah, and that takes confidence. I mean, Ian's a very successful guy, and he can he can choose who he who he works with. But I, I also think that, with no matter what at what level of success you're at, uh, or whether you're still striving for success, sometimes you know have the courage to, to pick and choose who you work with, who you hang out with. So, love your work, Griffo. Uh, love the name of the club. Don't like the <laughs> uh, the essence behind that club. I'm going to avoid it at all costs, mate. We are. At the, about the 53-minute mark, I have thoroughly enjoyed this episode. We have covered too, some serious too. marketing ground. Um, I love the fact that uh, there's just a little bit of marketing gold dripping from that ceiling. <laughs> the monkeys have been a bit noisy in the background, but uh, we'll address that by uh, shutting the door on this episode, I reckon, mate. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think I think yeah. we've done enough here. Thank you for listening in, everyone. We hope uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. It's been uh, high energy today. I, high like energy. We, we, we need should, more spiders. We need a tarantula just let loose in your <laughs> office uh, every time before we uh, do uh, do funny business, mate. Listeners, um, thanks for tuning in. Thank you to Net Registry for the love that you give us online. Uh, head over to netregistry.com.au. You can also head over to swiftly.com if you want to get a little design tweak done real quick. Uh, don't forget, if you want to continue the discussion, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and click on the forum button. Join it. I'm in there every day amongst there is no miserable bastards in the forum, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. It's amongst motivated small business owners who are answering each other's marketing questions, keeping each other accountable, providing the love and support that we all need and deserve as we grow our babies into the empire they deserve to be. That's the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. Griffo, I love your work. I can't wait to see you next time in the monkey cage for another episode of Funny Business. But listeners, until next time, may your marketing Be the best marketing. See ya. See you guys. You've been listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show with Tim Reid. Want more marketing goodness? Then visit smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. G'day, it's Timbo here, and I thought I'd share with you, as I am making a habit of these days, some wonderful listener reviews I'm receiving on the Apple iTunes store. So here's three to uh, share a bit of the love around. This one's from Kaz Finnan. She says, the recipe for fabulously productive car travel, five stars. I have to thank you for making all my car journeys so very productive, Timbo. I have always felt that car time is wasted time, and over the years I have tried numerous audio books to improve the use of my driving time. If I hear an American voice telling me to be the best I can be (laughs) one more time, I think I will just drive the car into a wall. Don't do that, Kaz. They mean well. Anyway, now I have small business, big marketing. Thank God for your for your back catalogue too, because I devour your new episodes in a heartbeat and hungrily scroll through past episodes as well. The best part is that all it's all still relaxed downtime for me. I'm learning, but it doesn't feel arduous or draining. Beep beep, love it. Thank you, Kaz. This one's from Striking T Dog. <laughs> Inspiration to a new small business operator, five stars. I have been setting up my business over the past few months, and part of the process involved looking for some solid small business advice in podcast form. This podcast delivers in spades. Awesome format with great insights and useful tips that I am working hard to integrate into my business plan. Only suggestion would be to have a section focusing on on your thoughts about the current small business landscape in Australia, including a marketing tip of the week prior to the interview. Keep up the awesome work, TJ. Thanks, TJ. That's a really nice idea. I will certainly consider that going forward, although there is a lot of marketing tips already in there and uh, I do want to avoid the overwhelm. Maybe the listener question kind of fills that void. Um, I've been doing that for a while now, so maybe this reviews pre that. Thanks for the idea though, TJ. And this one is from Elliot J. Bailey, five stars. Thanks, Tim. Been a long time listener and got some real marketing gold out of this. Don't forget the earlier episodes as there's some really gold, there's really good gold gear in there as well. Just listened in to the episode on rebranding, which I'm doing right now. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Love your work. See you next week. Bye.